we've had a long history of working there uh, of doing uh, social-based media or socially informed media, which uh, is quite a broad definition, but is certainly some, something that we, uh, we share with uh, the Cinematheque and the program that uh, Liz Schultz and Mitch Stuckey uh, are going to present today is uh, some concepts around uh, how uh, the production of media can be used as a way to, uh, to uh, engage people and empower people uh, to create a, a, an idea of democracy through uh, the concept of social marketing or of uh, using media to do something other than uh, sell something or, or uh, uh, present a polemic uh, becomes a, a very powerful tool. The empowerment that people feel when they when they make their own media is is a very exciting and uh, um, uh, I think under exploited uh, area in production that that uh, um, I know the people at the Cinematheque work toward uh, uh, promoting it and uh, a lot of our graduates actually uh, end up at the Cinematheque too so we have a, an alumni relationship there that I think is very important so um, the uh, one of the things that I just wanted to mention about the production of uh, media and, and how that can affect it uh, is, is that uh, there's a lot of discussion that's going on about the biases in media and it's, it's one thing to discuss the biases in media, it's quite another thing to understand that on a real basis of when you're actually making media and how that affects your practice. So one of the discussions that I hope that we get to today is about how biases in media uh, really play themselves out for you uh, as producers. And it's a very interesting self-reflexive question that, that, uh, that I'll pose to you now to think about as we go through this workshop, is um, what are your biases and how do they uh, manifest when you create your own media? Um, and this is something that is not that, that, uh, that easily answered, and, and I think it's through the produ uh, process of production that we really get to, to make that question uh, uh, ring true. Okay, uh, so Liz Schultz and uh, Mitch, uh, I'll leave it to them, and Great. welcome. Okay, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Um, so my name is Liz Schultz, and? I'm Mitch Stuckey. So just to let you guys know, um, firstly, how many people know about Pacific Cinema Tech? Who we are, kind of? Okay, so some people, but half. Um, for those who don't know, Pacific Cinema Tech is a not-for-profit charitable organization, best known as our movie theater, right? So we're like a festival venue, we have a lot of international films, local films, indie films, a lot of stuff that comes through our doors that is not seen in many other places. The other thing that we have, which people do not know very much about, is an education department. And specifically what we do is go out, work with schools, work with educators, work with community groups, not just in media analysis and media education, but also media production. And for us, those things are not divided in any way, they're completely integrated. And they're a pretty exciting way of looking at media, where the creation and the analysis and the education around are all completely fused together. Another thing that we do, by the way, is lots of workshops. So this is one of those. And our style might be different than what you're used to, um, even in terms of today. This is all going to be interactive and collaborative. There, we are facilitating here a really, hopefully, fruitful and interesting conversation. We are not the possessors of the right or wrong ways to do things. We're not going to be telling you, yes, this works, this doesn't. What we want to do is have a conversation with the people in this room who I'm assuming generally um, are really exciting people, interesting people. Every single event like this that we go to, we meet amazing people. So we want to hear what you have to say and really brainstorm together about that. Um, so as a result, you're going to have to do some talking and probably more than us. So this is probably almost the longest that either one of us is going to talk today. Um, the first thing that we want to start off by doing is really to think about the topic of today, which is engaging the resistant among us. And I can tell you that this idea for this workshop came about because of a relative of mine. And it came about because these are people that I love very much. But somehow trying to have them acknowledge in their case that environmental issues are not just about hype is a wall that I hit with them every single time we talk about it. It's all just hype to them. This has all been exaggerated. There's really nothing wrong with the planet whatsoever. Everything's fine. Go ahead, have as many kids as you want. This is a good idea. 
and trying to have logical conversations with them, we come across this interesting barrier. They're resistant to these ideas, and not just a little resistant, sometimes actively, almost viciously resistant to this idea that they really don't want to hear about, which is that there's a bit together. So this is the case about so many social issues. That's where the idea for this workshop came out of, was this idea that surely we can get past this idea of the fear-based documentary, the fear-based journalism that's out there. And it's really not on one side of the political spectrum. It's across the board. Even You see it in a lot of leftist campaigns, as well as right-wing right campaigns, where there's this real sense that what we really need to do is scare people into realizing how important this is. Agreed. But <laughs> you turn people off really fast, or else you end up preaching to the people who already agree with you. And you, know, you might be providing them with a little bit of new information, maybe a few new tactics. You might inspire a few people, but you've got a whole chunk of your audience that you've effectively turned off, and completely so. And in some cases, that's the majority of the people that you're actually trying to reach. So what we're going to do today is start by um, thinking about for ourselves some campaigns. So what I mean by that is we can take an issue and we can think about how is awareness generated about that issue. I want you to think to yourself right now about campaigns that you think to yourself, wow, somebody tried to generate public awareness about this, and that was really successful, or that was really shockingly unsuccessful. And I'm sure you know examples of both. So just think to yourself for a second about that. I hope you've got at least one that pops into your head right away, because those are usually the best ones. So what I'm going to ask you to do is turn to someone next to you and share that campaign idea with them. And then we're going to start charting. And this is going to be a chart that we're going to add to over the course of the workshop. So just go ahead. Turn to the person next to you, share which one you thought of. Introduce yourself if you don't know them already.
purity and saying that women should save themselves till marriage. And of course, it's not successful because HIV rates have gone up. And uh, yeah, so that's not very successful because <coughs> it's potentially been successful. Um, so the goal was to not have people, um, yeah, that's it, it's like some kind of purity campaign. So the goal was not to have people have HIV AIDS, but now more people do. So maybe the strategy or the, I mean, anybody please comment by the way. Well, uh, how would we even sum that up? So maybe like a, a misfire in strategy or like mm -hmm. a misfire in the approach? Potentially, if people are supposed to have sex anyway. So um, condoms yeah. work, um, yeah. people not to have sex then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so maybe just use it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just thought of the, the BC Hydro campaign to save energy. <coughs> they just released the numbers. They spent $18 million on the campaign, and energy use has not gone down. Yeah, I so, think it was $500 million over the, something the like whole that? period. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that was a huge misfire. Wow. And so just since all of us have probably seen Alma, so what do you think went wrong? There's a, I think a pullback effect is that uh, you, you get one of those... Uh, low watt light bulbs and you put that in a room and then that justifies the fact that you have a great big screen TV that uses 50 times the power in another room because you're saving energy somewhere else. So I think it's a cathartic uh, Well, and, and they, they asked to ridicule the people. Like it, it oh. said like, if you're wasting energy, then you're a moron. You know? <laughs> Which is not really constructive. Okay, you know? so maybe non-constructive yeah. or and maybe not accommodating in reality. Yeah. Like what people are actually going to do. Yeah. Link that into the example that I gave. Um, I see some real problems with something like the Red Campaign in Bono. The idea that whatever the cause is, the solution is always you as an individual consumer. It's never institutional, governmental, and it's not even addressing us in the same way that BC Hydro doesn't address us as a community. It addresses us as an individual consumer only. That's the only way that we can affect any change. And, and public sphere interactions were successful, but but it was impossible to actually affect institutional change. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of successful and unsuccessful at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an interesting one. And that's exactly the case with a lot of these things that we're talking about, right? They, don't, they aren't limited exclusively to the sphere of communication or media and journalism, right? They're huge issues. And what's happening is that there are so many different factors and areas of society that are all interacting together. Any last suggestions for the unsuccessful successful yeah okay. I'm not exactly sure why maybe the name turned people off I don't know the marketing like what yeah. I'm not sure what it was yeah actually I really like that movie yeah I'm just saying <laughs> that, 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 it's like the people who've watched it generally tended to like it yeah. but at the same time I know a lot of people didn't watch it like they didn't watch it to the same degree that Fahrenheit 9-11 got, got watched right so mm -hmm. um, but then again Fahrenheit 9-11 was like really easy theaters and you know a capitalism love story that, that was never released in theaters right so right they, they, they reach of the audience is a lot smaller you want to watch this okay so and maybe and distribution, to it. distribution factors mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i mean this is an interesting i think this might be a nice segue to that because what as well when we're talking about you know documentary journalism all these different, and we, we aren't going to limit ourselves closely to those arenas obviously um because there aren't clear lines around the media at this point that's kind of a silly distinction to make in some ways. Um, but what we're really talking about with all of these issues are, you know, we have an issue, we're trying to in some way create either social change, public awareness, we're trying to motivate people to do, in many cases, something very specific. And in some cases it's really misfire, right? And something is going on and there may be a whole bunch of things wrong with it. But in many cases what we're talking about here is perhaps if I were to, you know, find a common thread amongst these, in some cases it's a lack of acknowledging what maybe a reality of a situation is, whatever that is. If it's that, in this case, you know, in the case of capitalism, a love story, okay, well you need to get that distributed to your audience, you need to get that done. 